Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about specific heats. So up here I have the definition of the specific heat. C is defined as dq over dt, where the d down in the denominator here uh, signifies that it's an exact differential. It doesn't matter how we carry out this process, but the del up here signifies that it does depend on the heat transfer process. So what that means is that we can specify a couple different useful specific heats, and two of them that you'll, that you'll see pop up all the time are Cv and Cp. Cv is the constant volume process, so if we do this, uh, the heat transfer process with a constant volume, we get Cv. And if we have a constant pressure process, we end up getting Cp, which is where the heat transfer is carried out at constant pressure. So I'm going to start with an expression for the first law of thermodynamics shown here. I have a video describing how to get to this equation. I'll link to that either here in the video description if you want to see where this comes from. And the expression is just saying that we have the change in the energy of a system is equal to the heat added to the system plus the work done on the system or minus the work done by the system. It's the one equation, it's for both of those sayings. Uh, and we're going to say that the energy and the heat can be uh, described as a function of two different variables, or two different state variables, V and T. And so if we take the derivative here and expand it out, we have to take partial derivatives because it is a function of two uh, different variables. And so we get these partial derivatives, dE dV holding T constant times dV and then dE dt holding V constant times dt. That's for this term here. We also want to expand out the dq in the same way, and that's shown here. And then we have minus PdV here. And for this, uh, for this red process here, we're assuming a constant volume process. So this is just saying that the change in the volume for the process is equal to zero, or dV is equal to zero. And if dV is equal to zero, then these terms here cancel out, and we're actually just left with this term and this term, and that's what I've written down here is dE dt at constant V times dt is equal to dQ dt at constant V times dt. And so what that is saying then is that our, uh, if you look at this term right here, this dQ dt, we've specified this for a constant volume process, we're holding V constant, and so that is the definition of our specific heat at constant volume, and this term is equal to this term here, which means that our uh, specific heat at constant volume is actually equal to the change in energy uh, with the change in temperature at constant volume. So that's our expression for uh, the specific heat. Now if we make an assumption that we have a thermally perfect gas, then we can say that the, and I have another video on this that I'll link to in the video description, then we can say that the energy is just a function of temperature, so it's no longer a function of the internal volume, or the uh, specific volume. So we have E as a function of T now, and you can see that these were partial derivatives here because they, because E depended on two different variables. Now that we have E only depending on one variable, the partial derivatives go back to normal, de normal derivatives. So we can say that Cv is equal to dE dt. If we rearrange re this, we get an expression that you're probably familiar with, which is dE is equal to Cv dt. Note here that for a thermally perfect gas, Cv is still a function of temperature. If we make the assumption that we have a calorically perfect gas, that means that by definition the specific heats are constant, and now Cv here does not depend on temperature. Now we're going to uh, go through the process for the constant pressure process, or Cp. Here we have the first law again, but now it's in terms of enthalpy. See my other video for it. And enthalpy, in this case, we're going to use a more convenient form where it's in relation to, or as a function of temperature and pressure as opposed to the function of temperature and specific volume. Similarly for Q, if we expand out this, uh, these derivatives or these differentials because it's a function of two different variables, we have to use this uh, partial derivative notation. So we have expanded the dH out to here, the dQ out to these terms, and then we have the plus VdP here. We're assuming a constant pressure process to specify down this, uh, this specific heat process. So the dPs are equal to zero, the change in pressure is equal to zero. Any term that has a dP goes to zero, and we're left with two terms like we were in the other in the other sense. Here we have the dH dt at constant P dt and dQ dt at constant P dt, and that's down here. Again, note that this here is the definition of the specific heat, and we've specified it to a constant pressure process. So we can say that Cp is defined as dQ over dt at constant P, which is this dH dt at constant P. So that's what this is saying here. And for a thermally perfect gas, the enthalpy is also only a function of temperature, which means that these partial differentials just change into normal differentials. So we have Cp is equal to dH dt, or if we rearrange this, we get dH is equal to Cp dt. For the thermally perfect gas though, Cp is still a function of temperature. If we uh, make another limiting assumption that the specific heats are constant, then we have the calorically perfect gas, and the Cp is no longer a function of temperature. Now I'm going to derive 
derive another equation that you've probably seen a lot. And we're gonna start with the definition of enthalpy H, where H is equal to E plus PV. We're gonna make a limiting assumption that we have a thermally perfect gas. This is what we used on the previous uh, whiteboards uh, down at the bottom, but the thermally perfect gas assumes that the intermolecular forces between the molecules are negligible. And so we get that the ideal gas law holds. So we have PV is equal to RT. So we're gonna plug in for PV here, we'll plug in RT and we'll get E plus RT is equal to the enthalpy. We also have that the energy and the enthalpy are only functions of temperature. And so what that means is that the enthalpy equation then becomes H is only a function of temperature is equal to E only a function of temperature plus RT. And now if we take the derivative with respect to the temperature, then we get dH dt is equal to dE dt. The derivative of this with respect to temperature is simply R. And these are uh, these d's are exact differentials because of the fact that the uh, energy and enthalpy are only functions of one variable temperature. And so what we see is that this is the definition of the uh, specific heat at constant pressure, Cp, specific heat at constant volume, Cv, and so we end up with this relationship, Cp is equal to Cv plus R, where R is the specific gas constant. Now I'm going to define the ratio of specific heat gamma as the ratio of Cp over Cv. In my thermal book, it's uh, gamma is actually K, but I strongly dislike using K in, in a lot of, or uh, most of of gas dynamics books, you'll see it, uh, the ratio of specific heats as gamma. So I'm gonna use gamma from now on. From our discussion before, uh, we can see that CV is equal to DEDT and that CP was equal to DHDT. And you can actually write these, CV and CP, as functions of the specific heat ratio and the specific gas constant. We will use the gamma is equal to CP over CV and CP minus CV is equal to R. This is the same as the equation that we had on the other, uh, on the other board, except that I subtracted CV from both sides. This, however, using this expression here limits the resulting expressions that we will get, the functions of gamma and R, to only thermally perfect gases or calorically perfect gases. First, let's solve for the expression for CV. We're gonna start with the CP minus CV is equal to R equation. And the trick is to divide this equation by whatever specific heat that you wanna solve for. So we're gonna divide this equation by CV. So we divide both sides by CV. So we have CP minus CV over CV equals R over CV. We can uh, divide this out or, or shift this out because we have the single value in the denominator. So we have CP over CV minus CV over CV is equal to R over CV. You'll note that CP over CV is the definition of gamma, the ratio of specific heats. CV over CV is going to equal 1. And so if we plug those in, we end up getting gamma minus 1 is still equal to this right-hand side, R over CV. Multiply both sides by CV, so we end up getting CV, is, CV times gamma minus 1 is equal to R. And now I divide both sides by gamma minus 1, and we get the final expression, CV is equal to R over gamma minus 1, and you can see that it's a function. CV is a function of gamma and R. Now we can derive the expression for the specific heat at constant pressure. Again, we'll start with the CP minus CV is equal to R equation. We want CP, so we'll divide the equation by CP. CP minus CV over CP is equal to R over CP. We'll uh, spread these out now. CP over CP minus CV over CP is equal to R over CP. CP over CP is equal to one. CV over CP is one over gamma because CP over CV is gamma. And that gives us one minus one over gamma is equal to R over CP. So it's a little bit trickier here. However, we're gonna substitute in for this one. I'm going to substitute in gamma over gamma because gamma over gamma is equal to one. Uh, and now you can see that we have a common denominator here. So we'll just combine the, uh, the two terms together. So we have gamma minus one, gamma minus one over gamma is equal to R over CP. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by CP. So I get CP times this left-hand side is equal to R. And I'm gonna multiply by gamma over here, divide by gamma minus one. And we end up with our final expression of CP is equal to gamma R over gamma minus one. So this video gave some primers and derivations about specific heats that'll be useful in some of my future gas dynamics videos. So thanks for watching.